Hey, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin, episode 17 this week. Um, I am just getting back from the NAMI National Convention, which was awesome. Um, I met a lot of amazing new people and have, like, all these pamphlets and flyers I picked up from all these different things, and I'm trying to go through them and learn about all this new stuff. I learned, among other things, that you can donate your brain, um, which, like, not like your other organs. If you, you know, other organs should be useful to other people, so you should, it's probably after an accident or something like that. Uh, but you can donate your brain separately, and you can still donate your other organs and donate your brain. It's, and it's through the University of Miami, and it seemed kind of exciting. Anyway, what I was talking about, um, at the convention, and there was, I mean, there was just so many different workshops and panels and things like that, and I think they recorded them on, this is a CD, on CDs, uh, so you can order, uh, through NAMI online, I think, the CDs, uh, and I'm really grateful to NAMI for inviting me and having me, um, and just inviting all these amazing people and getting us all together in one place, so, uh, I thought this week I would say a little bit about what I said at the conference, uh, which was about faith communities being places of healing in a hurting world. And my argument was that they can often be places of hurting in a hurting world. Um, uh, and in order to become places of healing, we need to stop isolating people and shunning and shaming people, uh, which happens a lot, I think, in faith communities. And it's I think we face, those of us in the non-dominant faith, non-Christians, uh, living in North America in particular, uh, face some special challenges because we don't have the same options as everyone else. Like, a, I, if I want to go to a Southern Baptist church, I can go to one anywhere, and there's probably 30 different churches that I can go to and pick from uh, here in Raleigh. But uh, if I want to go to a mosque, there's pretty much one option, uh, and I don't feel comfortable there. And most mosques in the United States segregate men and women, and I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Um, and for the record, neither does my husband, who is also Muslim. Uh, we don't like it. And it, not just because it, we're westernized or feminists or whatever. No, because it's against Islam. Um, the Prophet Muhammad prayed next to women. Uh, the first convert to Islam was a woman. Um, people in Mecca pray side by side, men and women. Uh, so it's, if it's good enough for the Prophet Muhammad and good enough for Mecca, it's good enough for me. Point being, we don't get the same options. And... Because uh, it's the conservative people who end up start building the institutions, building the actual buildings a lot of times in, um, in the U.S. in particular and in Canada as well. Um, so we're, we end up with these institutions that don't really represent us. Um, and I have a great community of Muslims that is online. Um, and we don't f often meet under the same roof. Um, not, but a lot of us exist who are forward-thinking um, and don't buy into a lot of the isolating uh, language that some institutions that are more conservative that end up getting built here uh, abide by. I mean, if you think it's sort of like the fashion equivalent would be, imagine if you could only shop at Brooks Brothers for the rest of your life. Like, how horrible would that be? Um, and not even that. Like, when it comes to Islam, you have a lot of Saudi money coming in to the U.S., um, so it's almost like you could only shop at like Little House on the Prairie or FLDS shop for the rest of your life. That would suck, you know? So, um, at any rate, my point was that, uh, faith communities aren't always places of healing. And the first thing, in order to become places of healing, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that historically we have not been for so many people for, and just for being different, whether it was because they were women or gay or have a mental illness and we told them you can pray your way out of this, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, until we acknowledge our past, then we won't be able to move forward. And I think it's possible for us to become places of healing. Uh, but what needs to happen is we need to stop isolating people. And, and I made it a point in my talk to say that when it comes to mental illness, that is literal. Uh, because we're still literally putting people in isolation. And I talk about this a lot, but the United States, we put more people in solitary confinement, both for treatment and punishment despite it's proven to be ineffective and counterproductive and actually in uh, cause symptoms of mental illness in people who don't already have a diagnosis. Uh, in cases when you put people who don't have a diagnosis in solitary confinement, they can come out with symptoms. Um, but despite that, so that's the country we live in where we've criminalized mental illness, where our largest mental health facilities are prisons. Uh, so I think it's a moral obligation for people of all faiths, people of conscience, uh, to stand up and say this isn't right and help pull people out of isolation. And my argument was basically that that's what faith should do and that's what community should do is pull people out of isolation. 
Um, unfortunately, we have a long way to go when it comes to mental illness because we have to start literal. We have to pull people out of literal isolation wards. Um, but after that, it, we have to stand up for them, you know, because they're, they're people who are in there don't have the ability to stand up for themselves and speak for themselves. So my point at the conference was I was hoping that I could be a voice for them uh, since they couldn't be there and say, hey, as people of faith, it's our obligation to stand up and fight for uh, those who are still stuck in literal isolation. Um, and I should say that in the meantime, as acknowledging that places of faith haven't always been healing places for a lot of people, um, healing places, hospitals, prisons, unfortunately, that, that act as hospitals in this country, um, need to become more hospitable and more accommodating to people of faith in general, uh, I think. And, and the way we do that is we get more and better hospital chaplains who are more well-educated in other faiths and not in evangelizing, per se. Um, but that's pretty much it for now. I was really happy to go to the conference. And again, Nami did a fantastic job. Uh, if you guys can come next year, I think it's going to be in San Francisco. So hopefully I will see you there next year. And until then, I think I will see you next week. Hopefully, God willing. Take care.